Good afternoon, ladies and men folk. Welcome to episode 51 of Word Ninjas Live. I'm actually glad I paid attention to the little tracker saying, hey, you're going live because the two-step process is gone all of a sudden. I was waiting for the second pop-up. So, yay surprises. Good afternoon, everyone. I am your instigator of literary insanity today, Charles. And joining me is our regular co-hosts, William of Granville. Hello. And Justin of Isaacs. You moot. You talk too fast. But say it again. I said hello there. All we got was air. I think your mute button has a bit of a delay. Well, the mute button wasn't on. Let me adjust the gain on the microphone. Hooray! One of us has to have technical difficulties, at least once per episode. But if this is the worst of it, we're pretty good this time around. Yep. I'm assuming you can hear me now? Yes, we can. Excellent. It was just the microphone gain was too low. Ah. Yeah, that'll do it sometimes. My camera zooms in too much because it's on the laptop. It's not a standalone camera, so I have to park myself a little bit far away. So the microphone's probably farther away from me than it is from you. Yeah, mine's pretty close just because of my desk positioning and all that. And we do not have any interviews or special guests this week. We have a couple in line, just none for today. So it's going to be a pretty straightforward episode this time around. We have a couple talking points. We have one bit for the highlight reel, our regular Muse food stuff, and regular goals and aspirations updates, and events and all that good stuff. But let's get things started with the talkie points. Let's see. I only had two because those are the ones that piqued my interest this week. First one is, how does character gender affect a story plot, if at all? And I will kick things off since it was kind of a weirdly phrased question. So for some context, this was primarily because there was a lot of ridiculousness over this week because apparently Thor is now becoming a woman, or a female is taking up the mantle of Thor with the magical hammer and whatnot. And everyone was in a kerfluffle. Which is odd considering the history of that character. Yeah, I'm not familiar with too much of the history of the character itself. Um, that was so, the frog ones. <laughs> and yeah. he was probably a zombie during the zombie yeah, it series. Surprise me. Or maybe that was DC. Obviously, I'm not a comic guy, so... Uh, DC had Blackest Night, where people were zombies. Marvel had Marvel zombies. (laughs) They've both done it, just different styles and reasons. Mm -hmm. Which one has the infinite universes? Both, probably. Both. Great. So then, who cares? Yeah, I think DC has the multiple, or the multiverse stuff, which is why it's like Earth 616 and weird numbers and stuff like that. I forget how the Marvel verse coordinates things. It's all weird. I think Marvel just does it that if you die, they find some way to bring you back to life. Yeah, there's a... They always get better somehow. One way or the other. But, yeah... No, go ahead. I was going to say, this reminds me of the... Uh, kerfuffle when there was talk about a uh, a black Spider-Man, and I'm of the opinion of who who cares. Uh, the The only thing that I can see is um, from a company standpoint, your desired audience versus your desired piles of money um, being a factor in how much you kind of mess with current canon. Uh, and going out of your way to make Thor a female character, uh, I don't have a problem with. And I think that that would actually attract 
uh, a certain audience. And if that's the audience that you're willing to invest in and hope that they invest in your company as well by purchasing said comics, then I'm all for it. They can do whatever they want. And I don't know why people make a huge deal out of it. It's not like there's not thousands and thousands of comics of Thor in his male form already that they can't go back to. I think so long as the plot for it is properly justified and it's not just saying, hey, equal opportunity or whatever the ridiculous reason would be, as long as it's justified, why is this a big deal? Right. I mean, the, the torch has been passed from superhero characters in the past, you know. um, including Spider-Man not being Peter Parker anymore. So this is not a new concept. He got better. My uh, my concern, given the history I've seen with Marvel and DC, would be the... Uh, well, now we have a female Thor. Let's be as sexually provocative with her as possible. Since they seem to like to do that with some of their female characters. Yeah, that would be a problem. Especially since in order to wield the hammer that you have to be a pure of heart. So I don't mm. see her being a very sexually explicit character. Mm. Otherwise, she's going to have a hard time picking up that hammer. Mm. I think I Captain I America is the only other person who's been able to pick up the hammer so far. Uh, there have been multiple opportunities for other people to pick up the hammer for various reasons. Most of them is like deus ex machina or just I am the writer, so F you. Mm. <laughs> Um, I, I think, think that's Wonder, the translation Wonder, of Latin. I think Wonder Woman picked it up once. Yeah, but, Wonder Woman has, Captain America has, even the Hulk has done it, but I think it was in Zero G. So. <laughs> but, I mean, to be fair, Loki, who is the counterpart, has been female before for an extended period of time. He also had a horse baby with, like, 12 legs, according yeah. to ancient mythology. Yeah, I mean, he kind of turned into a horse at some point and had a horse baby, and it's mythology. Crazy shit happens a lot. Have any of these people who read the comics read Greek mythology? Obviously not. Probably not. I have. It's crazy. Hmm. Roman is pretty crazy, too. Yeah. Um. But it really did make me think, like, how much of a difference does it really make in an, in the basic plot structure of stories if you were to change the gender of one of the main characters or even a side character? I mean, beyond relationship-based stuff where it might get a little quirky. Well, not even relationship as in, uh, like, literal, like, dating relationship, but just how the other characters are going to interact with this person uh, has to be written correctly and accurately and well. Um, they're, you know, humans have their own prejudices, and superheroes also have similar prejudices that span different genders and whatnot. So they're going to interact with this character differently, and if that's treated correctly and accurately and fairly, then I don't see this being a huge problem. There is definitely some eggshells that they're going to have to walk carefully across, uh, but I have faith that they can do that. I feel uh, the real challenge is uh, how the readers are going to react, um, because when a reader finds out that characters a certain gender, they automatically may start to apply certain prejudices. I just think of uh, the original Metroid. When people played that and they were playing as Samus, most assumed they were playing as a guy until they got to the end of the game and it was revealed that Samus was a woman. A lot of people who played that were rather shocked by that fact that such a strong and powerful protagonist was female. Without being all half naked. <laughs> mm. Yeah, hopefully they treat this character switch or handing off the magical hammer thing properly. Or at least better than, uh, I think it's DC's New 52, when they rebooted the universe, literally. There was a 
big uproar because a lot of characters, entire personalities were changed out, and not all for the better. And very uh, few seem to be justified. I remember uh, that I was actually thinking about. I think that's what they did. That uh, one of the big ones was Starfire that they changed. Yeah. They gave her amnesia and then turned her into a slut. Pretty when much. She was supposed to be incredibly pure of heart and very innocent. And then they're like, no, nah, now she just doesn't remember anything and has sex with anybody that she finds. Well, unfortunately, there's still a business and there's still an audience for that. Mm, but it turned off a lot of the real Starfire fans, especially the young girls who took a lot of heart in Starfire, that they could be true to themselves and honest and pure and still be strong and respected. They took that character and turned her into a whore, and that turned off a lot of the female audience members. And comics need as many female audience members as they can, because Marvel and DC, especially DC, seem to like to scare them off as often as they can. And that's a large market that is being ignored. At least from the big two. I'd yeah. like to think that some of the smaller imprints might be handling the societal shift of actually supporting female characters a little better. But I'm out of the comic book industry for a good while now. I haven't really picked up any new series in probably a year or two. So I'm kind of out of the loop. The closest I pay attention to is a webcomic called The Gutters, where they touch on, from the industry side, the changes that are going on in the comic book industry. So I get to see a little bit of what's happening as it happens through reading that every Tuesday and Thursday and the comments that go with it. Yeah, most of the info I used to get was from another podcast, Major Spoilers, where they talk about a lot of that stuff, but I haven't listened to that in a while either because I wasn't buying comics, so I, it just didn't really interest me as much. But. Mm. It is always interesting when characters are rebooted or evolved or adapted or repurposed. So long as they do it in a reasonable and respectable manner, it's worth at least keeping or checking out and seeing how they do it. And hopefully they don't ruin it. Because their track records have not been perfect. Mm. Now, do they ever run multiple series of the same character set simultaneously without having something like really egregiously different, like the whole zombie thing? or Yes, I want to say. I feel like there can be characters where they have their own specific series, and then sometimes there's a, a duo series where they team up with someone else, and they're still canonically correct. It's just they're not necessarily simultaneous or parallel in plots, except for when they do the really big universe-spanning stuff, like when they did the uh, Blackest Night zombie apocalypse across the multiverse. Then it was just in every series. Wolverine would make a very awkward zombie if he could even be a zombie. He was. But how? Wouldn't he be able to heal no. himself from the zombie virus? No? Because Deus Ex Fuck You. Oh. Well, the good news is that he wouldn't slowly rot like a zombie. Maybe. I think his biggest problem was muscles and bone and tendon versus the uh, adamantium. The adamantium holds up better than everything else. So I think uh, every once in a while physics kind of defeated him in that way. Oh, did he literally like lose his healing powers during that series? I think, yeah. Or oh. it just wouldn't affect that. Same with probably... Silly yeah, Justin. Deadpool. Zombies can't be mutants. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> but mutants can be zombies. Well, yeah, it's... But when a mutant becomes a zombie, they're not a mutant anymore because now they're a zombie. I don't um, know. Marvel was weird. Logic. <laughs> it was impressive that... The zombies managed to eat the Silver Surfer, which actually creeped out Galactus. And then I think they ate Galactus. 
must have been a lot of zombies. Oh, they were all super mutants or super heroes and villains at that point because all the regular humans were food. Hmm. I think they need to have a Game of Thrones style era where famous characters are going to be permanently killed and actually uh, lose the license to be able to write for those characters. I, I don't know. That would be awesome. That would be awesome, and theoretically DC did that with Blackest Night in that the way they set it up, the various Lantern Corps really effed up the universe in such a way that if after they fix things, if you die, you're dead. That's it. There's no going back. Mm. But I think the new 52 came after that, so that probably reset all the rules again. Mm -hmm. It was mainly just an opportunity to bring back a lot of the main characters of the Justice League who had died at one point or another, and they wanted back. Except for Batman, who was just doing the whole time travel thing because, oh, wait, he died. No, no, he didn't. He was sent back in time to destroy the universe, because why not? Mm Mm-hmm. Comics are weird. I was going to say the exact same thing. That's why I don't read American comics, really. They confuse me. (laughs) And they're too pandering. Yeah. Yeah, and non-committal. Yeah, I like. I do like for one of my characters to die that they stay dead. Because <laughs> then it loses all emotional impact and meaning, knowing oh, they'll just bring them back in the they'll, next series. They'll be back. They're not really dead. Mm. No. Well, I want to watch a series or read a series and read a book, and then when someone dies, they're they're dead. Then that death means something. Until it doesn't. Yeah, well. Maybe for Nana, I'll write a whole bunch of uh, superhero fan fiction. <laughs> <laughs> then again, if you have a series that is just ongoing across decades upon decades, how many new characters and separate like IPs can you create over that long of a span to create new story and content? Well, I don't see why you can't just pass the mantle on each and every time. I mean, isn't that the whole thing behind the Green Lantern Corps, is when you die, the ring moves on to someone else? Yeah, for all of the Lantern Corps. So for those, it's pretty well set up that one of them dies, someone else picks it up. But for some of the other characters, it's probably a little more tricky. Although, as I was thinking that, I was going to say, hey, Captain America. But, oh, wait, several people have taken up the mantle of Captain America. You know what we need? We Batman. need another... Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> we need more complete one-offs, like Watchmen style. Well, they expanded on that universe as well. No, stop. But those, I think, were more prequels of the... Uh, not the Watchmen from the main comic book or the movie, but like the ones who inspired those within that universe. So oh, like the, like first the right hour, hour. And, okay. Yeah. I think they had one-offs for each of those, which looked interesting. But, yeah, it would be nice to have some good, solid one-off series, like um, Transmetropolitan. Granted, that was like a 12-volume series when all was said and done, but that one was fantastic. And thankfully, they have not tried to mess with that one too much. I still haven't read those Sandman stuff. Those are fantastic. Although I hear they were going to start playing with those again as well. But yeah, it would be nice to have some series where it actually ends and that's it. That way you don't get stuck in the comic book rotation of, well, it's been another year or two, we should do something dramatic. This is why I read manga. Most, not all, because some of them should have ended a long time ago. But most of them... Dragon One Ball. Piece, Dragon Ball, Inuyasha went on for a really long time that they did finally finish it. Naruto, Bleach... That one is ending. So is that one. Yeah. Well, Bleach is theoretically ending because the creator is sick. Like, mm. really sick. 
Yeah, like, he won't be around to finish the series anymore. Sick. Which is very sad. Mm. But uh, a lot of the other ones I read, you get 10, 12 volumes, and then they're done. <laughs> like, Trigun. <laughs> nice and short. And it's kind of heathenous for me to say this, but I'm kind of hoping that Fairy Tale after this, like, seven-part story arc starts wrapping up because they're getting to the point where it's getting a little dangerous to keep things rolling and escalating more and more. Confess that I'm... Richie does not hear that. I'm uh, reading Bleach, but I'm way behind, and I've already decided that I think once I finish the current arc I'm reading, I'm not going to read any more, because I've heard of the direction they go in, and it sounds weird. Yeah, I'm at least one or two story arcs behind on Bleach. I'm, I'm still in the middle of the, uh, the battle between the... Uh, uh, I don't even remember what they're called. The, the Soul Society oh, okay. captains and the Aaron Car over the fake city of Karakora Town. Yeah, there's a couple arcs after that. Mm -hmm. The the whole thing with the uh, Zanparto taking on their living forms and rebelling against the Soul Society, I don't think I have any interest in that. <laughs> no, I haven't gotten to that one. I've only heard about it because the anime got their way a long time ago. I got to one where uh, Ichigo lost his son Paktao again. again. He loses it all the time. That's another and thing I didn't care much for about Bleach was that the more. plots got really repetitive. Yeah, they're kind of getting into the rotation of, hey, we just defeated the big baddie. Oh, wait, there's a bigger baddie. Time for training! It worked in Dragon Ball. <laughs> <laughs> More 80s montage training and long shouting. Mm. Hyperbolic time chambers. <laughs> Just saying. Mm. thought we were going to be doing a short show. How did we get so The next topic. Onwards. We actually found a topic we wanted to talk about. <laughs> yeah. Let's dive into talkie point number two. Smart. Is the concept of an ebook subscription service, a la the uh, Kindle Unlimited, which people are talking about all of a sudden, of interest to people? And as I was l learning more about that, I came to the realization that other services like that already exist, so this is not like brand new or groundbreaking. It's just Amazon is so prevalent that they could easily kind of take over or take control of that little market. I actually had a lot to say about this. I, I, I wrote quite a bit in the show notes. Um, hey, let's have Justin talk then. Uh, the first thing I thought about is print books versus ebooks, the everlasting debate. Uh, and I actually prefer reading print books for the most part. Uh, it is wildly convenient to have Kindle books, or uh, I believe the Kindle Unlimited was also including audiobooks, which would be a nice perk for a lot of people. Um, unfortunately, I listen, I listen to so many podcasts that I don't have time to read audiobooks or listen to audiobooks, as it were. Yeah, same here. And uh, I prefer reading the text anyways. Um, and I don't have a whole ton of time to read these days. So I would have to weigh the subscription cost versus how much I would actually be able to use the service. I think it was nine ninety nine a month, and then it's just unlimited access to the entire library of what they have on there. Uh, yeah, the entire yeah library of what would be in the subscription, which isn't all the publishers. 
No, now. it's not everything. They actually have to make deals with the publishers to get access for the unlimited stuff. So I think it's at least half of the major publishers out there they have some sort of deal with, and the others I'm sure they're negotiating with or trying to figure something out. But And uh, so also I was thinking about how this would affect indie books or smaller... Um, you know, smaller outlets and one-offs, and uh, yeah, and all independent publishers. On the one hand, it would give them more exposure, which for most people just starting out in the indie publishing wor uh, world is way more important than money, which would be good. But is it going to turn to some Spotify payment plan where they get almost no money from people reading their uh, their books? Now, the Spotify thing is a little bit different because you people tend to listen to the same song over and over again, so costs can stack that way, where people generally don't read the same book more than once, maybe At twice. At least quick succession. Right. And also not every book that they read, unlike most songs. Hmm. So that'd be some interesting uh, marketing to take a look at deeper into, which I doubt Amazon would ever reveal that information. Maybe if you ask them nicely. No. And uh, I was questioning yeah, I earlier. The way they send a drone to your house. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did Amazon buy Audible, or are they just partnered with Audible very closely? I don't know offhand. Because I believe you can access Audible through Amazon now. My wife was doing it, and I was intrigued. But I don't listen to audiobooks, so I became instantly not intrigued after a few minutes. <laughs> it would be interesting. It, they must be at least partnered if they have not actually acquired them. Because if they want to integrate audiobooks into this unlimited service, that would be a fantastic way of going about it, because Audible is one of the biggest audiobook providers out there at the moment. Right, all the infrastructure is already done. So yeah. they can just buy the rights to use it. And I'm and kind of, I'm kind of in your place as well in regards to audiobooks. I like the idea and it an unlimited service for it would make it worthwhile if I didn't have like fifty podcasts in my queue already. Not to mention you and I have a large stack of books that we have to physically read that will probably take up until the end of twenty fifteen. Mine's bigger than yours. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Moving on. Uh, what was the other thing? Oh, uh, lumping it into the Amazon Prime uh, model, I believe you can take out one uh, book a month from the Kindle library, but I think that's also hilariously limited. So any way to increase the value of Amazon Prime would be good ever since they raised their prices, and they're probably going to raise them again in a few years. Just yeah, to offset, most of their costs come from the two-day shipping and people just doing Amazon Prime and then, you know, shipping every single thing that they can, two-day shipping. Mm -hmm. I think I'm one of the few people left in the world that is not an Amazon Prime member. I uh, stopped using Amazon Prime when they raised the prices because it just wasn't I wasn't using the two-day shipping enough. So, <laughs> well, it'd be nice if they had an Amazon Prime subscription that did not have the two-day shipping situation but had all the other perks. That would be a nice thing for them to do. I feel oh, like I might really join that. You're not alone, DJ. What was that? I'm not on Amazon Prime either. Yay! I'm not alone. You're not alone. It's just the two of us. <laughs> Not either. I did. Three of us. I, I just said I wasn't on it. Four of us. Is okay, Cal the just prime me. member? That I am. You're ruining everything. <laughs> Too bad. So, <laughs> technically, then the one with the Amazon Prime is the odd man out. Woe is me. <laughs> and my free two-day shipping. That helped me out tremendously uh, in the last two in the last couple of months with all the uh, stuff I uh, bought for Canadacon. 
it was funny not to keep advertising for free Amazon Prime, but w- the the week after I canceled, my friend told me that he was inviting me to a backpacking trip the following weekend, and I needed to go get a hiking backpack. And I went to Amazon and bought it, and then I realized, oh crap, I don't have two-day shipping anymore, and I need this now. <laughs> So I ended up paying shipping for it like a week after I canceled Amazon Prime. I was like, damn, so stupid. You don't have an EMS or REI close by? Or um, do you just not do actual stores? I, well, I don't like to go outside. Uh, but besides that, the it was like a 30% off the one that I was looking at on Amazon. I was looking at other retailers at one point too, but this one was out of steel, so... Now that we have a fourth person in on this, would Calvin like to join in the discussion? No, not really. All right, excellent. Moving on to All right. Word Muse. <laughs> yeah, unless anyone has some last nope. minute commentary. Oh. Yeah, I say is anything that gets people reading is good in my book. Seriously, though, um, what were you guys talking about? Uh, the second talkie point about how Amazon Kindle is trying to do an unlimited service. So, like, for 10 bucks a month, you can access their entire library, including audiobooks. And is that an interesting <clears throat> concept, or is it not worth it? Depends on how much they charge for it. Uh, I think they were proposing nine ninety nine a month, and you'd have unlimited access to everything they have. But it might, it I would think it will be limited to like you can only check out one book at a time, kind of like a or a certain amount, kind of like a Netflix style. Back when people actually mailed the DVDs to themselves and all that, so mm-hmm. you can probably only check out a couple things at a time, and then you have to check them back in before you can get something else. Although not that, everyone reads like ten books a month, so. And that that model doesn't really isn't really necessary for non-physical goods. The reason why you had to return things for non-physical goods or for the physical goods is because other people need to use them. Uh, the Amazon, I mean the uh, the Netflix instant streaming, there was no limitation on that. Other than bandwidth so, speeds. Right, depending on your provider, and then. Uh, yeah, so I don't see why they would need to limit you necessarily. Uh, everything would be attached to your Amazon Kindle account, and if you decide to erase your subscription, it would just erase all the books from your Kindle account instantly. So it wouldn't really matter to them if you rented out 400 books at a time. As long as they're accordingly tagged for the unlimited service, so if you were to unsubscribe and it takes all of those away, it doesn't take everything else away with it. Actually, you know what? I take that back because they would need some way to track who deserves cuts of the money from the Amazon Prime or from the uh, the book subscription, unless maybe they didn't do it that way. But I would imagine that more money goes to higher volume rentals than other people. Be an interesting model to see how they play with that. But if they, yeah, I don't know what they would do with that. Yeah, that was the one thing that uh, uh, that uh, made me wonder about that uh, this particular model. Like, how are authors going to get a cut of <clears throat> a cut out of uh, this subscription model? Is it going to be like a spot model where like uh, the authors will get like just pennies uh, pennies on on the dollar from I mean, in royalties? Like Spotify, musicians don't get a lot of money off of that, unless you, unless you're a particularly intrepid soul uh, that has figured out a way around it. Like there is this group that managed to make, I think, like twenty thousand dollars off of uh, Spotify royalties by like telling all their fans to just lose this one uh, one song over and over and over and over. <laughs> but I'm not sure how you'd be able to do that in a, in the uh, 
Kindle, uh, the uh, Kindle format. Yeah, what I was talking about right before you joined was uh, the exact same thing, that Spotify, you're typically playing the same song multiple times, so there's potential for money to accumulate that way. But for books, on the other hand, uh, you, you typically only read a book once, unless you're a diehard fan of a specific book. Uh, but pretty much any music that you get on Spotify, you'll probably listen to more than once. Right. And the idea of grabbing all of the... If I'm a user and then I grab, like, 200 Kindle books and then never actually read any of them, then do the people that I downloaded them from deserve the money? How is it going to track if I'm actually reading the material? So maybe they... That's why I was saying they may they might actually limit you to a certain number a month. Ah. Trying to skim through some of the articles talking about it. This looks weird. Or maybe rent out like a couple at a time. Like you would rent out a book and you could well then you would just unrent it and then get the next one if you really wanted to game the system that way. Seems kind of silly. But you were saying CJ? Uh, just skimming through some of the articles, some of the things that jump out are trying to explain it. Books that can be downloaded free as part of the subscription have an orange Kindle Unlimited icon under the title along with a price tag of zero dollars. So I guess you have to keep an eye out for which ones are marked under that or not. And some authors publish with more than one house or like publishing house. Subscribers may find that they can download certain books by say Margaret Atwood or Michael whatever but not other titles by the same authors. Because looks like some of the big houses currently not participating are HarperCollins, Hatchet, Simon & Schuster. They have a lot of books in their library, as it were. So subscribers would have to actually be aware of the authors they are interested in or the publishing companies those authors are under to be able to figure out is it worth subscribing to if the book may or may not be there. And I don't think everyone's going to make the time and effort to actually become aware of just what publishing company their authors are under or the authors that they're interested in. Hmm. Most likely, it'll probably it'll probably just be kind of a toss up. Just uh, give the servers a try, see if they like it. I'm guess, <clears throat> excuse me. I'm guessing uh, they're gonna at least give people like either two weeks or like a month to give it a try before they decide to uh, continue with the subscription. That would be nice. Or even say like five downloads. So you can spend as long as you want, as long as you don't hit that five download cap. But you can at least test it out, see how it works, and all that. Right. But I mean, if some of the big houses are not participating yet, or may not at all, what does that mean for the imprints and the indies? Like, are they going to be able to afford to get into this deal, or is it only going to be the heavy hitters? I haven't found any information to, that details that yet. Hmm. I mean, if they had kind of a book read or a, what is that? Goodreads style setup where it can recommend books available that might be of interest to you, that would be worthwhile if you, if you don't really know what you're interested in or who you want to read at any given time. Hmm. Same with like the Netflix style. As long as they have some sort of recommendation service, that might help out. Oh, it's going to be interesting. I, I do not think that I will end up with it because Lord knows I have enough books as it is. Uh, what if you didn't have like a pile of books waiting for you to read? Uh, if I didn't have the pile of physical books, I have, I don't even know how many books on my Kindle already, and I keep 
getting more because of um, story bundle and humble bundle books or like the ebook bundles. I keep on ending up with some of those, so I'm getting dozen a dozen books per month usually, or ebooks. So I don't really need to pay ten dollars for an unlimited service. At least not at this point in your life. <laughs> no. I mean, if I were to ever get into a situation where I were not physically able to read, if mm. my eyesight got that bad or something, then the audiobook part of that would come in nice. Then it would be appreciated. But mm. For the moment where I am now, I'm going to hold off. Yeah, it's definitely not something that's going to be for everybody, but there might be any shot there that will find some use out of it. Yeah, but as Will mentioned before, anything out there that helps help readers find books and read, I'm for supporting. I'm just not going to personally have it. All right. Anybody else here? Um, maybe will uh, maybe willing to possibly try it out, perhaps, or just a note for you guys as well. I really don't read ebooks. I usually just read print books. And I'm very picky about what I read, so I don't know if I would use that service anyway. Yeah, I'm probably in a similar boat. I've already got a huge backlog catalog of books. And I find it more fun to just walk into a random paperback bookstore and just start grabbing stuff off shelves. Um where it wouldn't be as easy to do that with an Amazon situation because you'd be you'd have to search for keywords and topics, which I guess could be good, but I prefer the more random things because even if you start searching for a keyword, the first 20 books are going to be the most popular in that keyword, and I'd rather dig deeper than what the standard fare on Amazon would probably be. Hmm. There's an interesting concept for a pr service pr provider. Create some sort of ebook setup where you put in a couple key terms that you want for like the style or the length, and then it'll come up with like a half dozen options for you to check out or download, possibly as like a mystery bundle. You're not sure what you're going to get until you actually receive them in your e email. And it can be user rated rather than just industry rated. CJ, haven't you started enough companies already? No. <laughs> Calvin, get on that. Now? Uh, let's wait until after the podcast ends. All right. Okay. 45 minutes worth of talkie points. I think that's pretty good. I vote we go to the high re highlights reel. Let's keep this show rolling. No, we all... empty. Huh? Isn't the highlights reel empty? We have a website to highlight. Oh, mm-hmm. Go on. I see what you did busy. there. Now, uh, let's see. This is a little self-promotional, and by a little, I mean a lot. Hmm. Or entirely. But one of our members has been busy this week creating our Etsy store, finally. Mm -hmm. Because I just couldn't be troubled to figure out the whole Zazzle stuff, and then it turned out not to be worth it after all, so... We have an Etsy store now because we do want to get all of our stuff up there. So if you can't make it to a convention we happen to be at, since we're only at three this year and one of them's already happened, you can still get some of our shiny baubles or at least see what the shiny baubles are. And theoretically, Ed will be getting the rest of our inventory up in the coming weeks and months because we keep creating more. Yeah, he's working on it. He's 
fighting with the fact that Etsy doesn't let you track uh, individual separate items within one listing. That's why the two different types of plush word ninja cubes are separate listings. Ah. So you can keep track of inventory of them individually. So the uh, the buttons are going to be interesting with 75 of them. Oh dear. And also the denim ones are separate because they're more customizable than the sweaty ones are. Yeah. So, yeah, Ed's going to be a little busy the rest of this year. But we thought we'd at least get things started with some of the easier stuff, or at least the quicker stuff to get up there. But, yeah, and you can search for it conveniently. It's under full coverage writers, just like most of the other stuff we have. So, yay for finally getting our shiny baubles on the Internet. Now all I need is for Ed and Calvin to coordinate so we can get it on our website proper. Mm, yeah, about that. Yeah, I think I put a link to it in our shop, but that's as far as I could figure out until we figure out the proper workaround. But yeah, that is the nice and easy highlight for the week. Because it is kind of noteworthy, since we've been trying to figure stuff like this out for over a year now. So, yay! Yay. And since I have screen share up and I don't feel like popping it off and on, let's go to writing prompts, because that's up next. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. And since we have three other people on, and I don't want to talk for like the next hour across the other segments, you three get to fight it out for those three segments. I'll do the one-liners. Boom. There is no boom segment. You lose. But cubes... Stupid mute delay. <laughs> <laughs> well, then Calvin gets the one-worders. So, we'll start it off. All right. Our one-line writing prompts for this week are, let's organize a cook-off. Typewriters amuse me. Mages are awesome. Is he crying over there or laughing? Your fate is sealed. Run now. I'm helping! I know who said that one all weekend at Kineticon. We're all out of mead. Go to the meadery for more. Stop calling me every 15 seconds. No one contradicts the holder of the magic stick. What do you mean this is being recorded? I'm pretty sure at least 75% of those came from Kineticon weekend. 75% of those came from the convention stories. No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you may want to uh, update this, uh, uh, update the uh, third to the last uh, one-liner because there is a spelling error. That's nothing new. <laughs> what, fifth ten isn't a thing? CJ! <laughs> you had one job. Among others. I think I'm down to one job now. All my other jobs were taken away from me. <laughs> so now I really have no excuse. Hey, look, a convenient distraction. Calvin, do the one-worders. It looked like any spiraling errors in the one word. So let's, let's start off with Wow. Mead. Interloper. Cover. Rivet. Shatter. Alone. Prism. Resurrection. And Calendar. And there you have it. 
your one worders for this week. All spelling error free. Yay. And your story cubes for this week, which are also spelling error free, because they're pictorial in nature, are an extremely wet striped shirt hanging from a clothesline in the sun. A uh, rather tall office building. Some sort of a uh, pretty flower. A guy yelling very loudly. And a guy knocking over a flask, probably related to the other guy yelling at him. There's also a person lifting up a barbell with uh, anime-style sweat marks. There is a large foot, possibly Bigfoot, possibly my own feet. There is a cane. Hopefully it's not a cane with a sword hidden in it. And there is also a uh, mushroom, which can be found on the backs of many mushrooms from Minecraft. And those are your story cues for the week. And those are all of your various styles of writing prompts for this week. As always, you are welcome to use any or all of these writing prompts for your literary endeavors. You don't have to use all of them at once. You can just use one of them, or even if, or even none of them. If one of them inspires a different idea entirely, go with that. If you do happen to write a flash fiction or a short piece based off of any of these prompts, we would love to read it. You can send us an email of the piece or just the URL where we can check it out. Our email address is wordninja at fcwriters.com. And also screen share so I can look at the show notes again. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Doo, 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 doo. Hey, goals and aspirations time. It's everyone's favorite mm -hmm. segment. Mm -hmm. I wasn't looking, so I have no idea who groaned, but they're first. And incredibly short, at least for this section. Uh, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I believe one of them... Ah, there we go. Uh, two things that ancillarily help my creative endeavors. Nothing actually creative in the last week since I've been super busy and not having a car has been extremely uh, difficult to get around which uh, wasted lots and lots of time in my life. So I have purchased a vehicle. Hooray. And I have also, in order to help foster uh, more creative juices and talking to people directly and not wasting time on the Internet, I have deleted my Facebook account, which basically means that I've reset it. I deleted my old account re-signed up with a new email address, blocked all ability for people to post on my wall, and I'm never going to post anything myself. But I do need to keep track of the various events that go on and manage my uh, admin pages for various endeavors, and uh, also using Facebook Check to actually talk to people directly instead of shouting into the void, and participating in the narcissism voyeurism feedback loop. And I have successfully done both of those things. And it was very easy to do both of these things for this week because I wrote them down on this list after they were completed. Just for cheating, you get to do your ongoing goals and aspirations next because we're going to change it up a little. Oh, wait, I'm going to, so I'm going right now do those? Right now. Oh, okay. I'm changing things you are up changing on the fly. Things. Oh, man. Aha. Uh -huh. Uh, okay, I have a lot of aspirations this week, and I think I can do them all. Uh, for one, prepare for an LLC meeting of Doom with uh, CJ next week. That should be, uh, there's a, a lot to go over there, and that will probably take the majority of my time. Uh, tangentially related, uh, front load work during the regular week instead of being a lazy slouch. This will make it so that my Fridays, Thursdays, and weekends are not uh, filled with me working and actually are filled with me doing other things. 
that are more productive than reading up on Reddit. Uh, I have also decided that when I drink coffee and I'm dehydrated, I fall asleep. So from now on, if I drink coffee, I will also be drinking large amounts of water. Hmm. And I discovered that at a uh, write-in or a productivity day with uh, CJ a couple days ago. And by a couple, I mean yesterday. I am also changing my timer plan to a deadline plan. Uh, to give a quick explanation, I have timers on my phone for just about everything. Uh, waking up, going to sleep, as well as a 2 o'clock timer to do specific things on specific days at 2 o'clock. One being prepare for this podcast on Sunday, for example. Uh, I have other things like go to the gym and write for an hour. And because the way that my days work at work, I end up doing a lot of work in the afternoon. I've decided that this 2 o'clock alarm is now going to be a deadline alarm. So if I can do this earlier in the day, you know, write for an hour or go to the gym in the morning, then I've already accomplished that task and I can dismiss the alarm. But if I wait until 2 o'clock, then I'm in deep trouble. Because now I will have three days to write, I will be writing three blog posts. And I will be also writing one challenge, which I will explain at a later date. Uh, I will also finish notes for an article I'm writing, start preparing for NaNoWriMo, and reread my last novel that I wrote for NaNoWriMo, Lily, and see if I can start progressing on that as well. And to think I only have four guilt monkeys. I can give you more if you want. I might need them. <laughs> I can give you the whole box if you want. Then, mm, no. Let's see here. What are my goals? Let's see. No, wrong one. Scroll up. 2014 projects. Update and upgrade the store. <laughs> Not my job anymore. It's Ed's turn to play with that. So, yay! One thing I can check off my list. Partnerships and affiliations. Those are in the works. I have various emails out to various organizations, and some are a little closer to happening than others. Once we are confirmed with some of them, I will actually talk about them on air, but for the moment, we have a lot of cool things in the works, and I'm really hoping that some of them manage to uh, happen. And there's actually a couple that fell off the face of the earth that I'm going to poke one or two more times, just on the off chance that we can bring them back. But that's really just ongoing. And the whole IP maintenance, I'm putting that on hold until we kind of figure out what we're going to be doing for Terra 2015. Hopefully next weekend we can figure some of that stuff out. Let's see. Interviews and networking. At Kineticon, we interviewed Chris Kaysen and were interviewed by Subculture.com. So that was pretty freaking awesome. And I see that both of those videos are up on our YouTube channel for people to check out. That's right. Yay. So much editing this week. <laughs> so much. Let's see. Convention inventory. Merchandise. Ed's domain. Booth setup. Ed's domain. Pricing, pitches, and logisticals. Sort of Ed's domain. I'm going to have to coordinate with him on that. Maybe in two weeks when we actually meet up in person. And let's see. For ongoing stuff, we already have an author queued up for episode 54 in three weeks. I have 12 interview emails out to various people. So once I can confirm some of those, we're going to get some more people on our show to talk to, which is going to be a lot of fun. And not just like one-off authors. We're actually going to get some like cover artists, some uh, publishers, all sorts of fun peoples. I have to transfer the remaining inventory I have to Ed, which, again, two weeks from now, Yay! Less stuff for me to do. And then, of course, the Doom meeting of Doomy Doomedness of Doom with Justin. 
That's going to be all sorts of fun. And I'm just going to leave it at fun. I can't wait. Let's see. Eeny, meeny, miny, Calvin. All right. Let's see what I got here. Let's see. I said I was going to start the uh, new book on my uh, reading list. Uh, that is yet to happen. To be fair, Kineticon and the uh, preparation therein. Let's see. I was still deciding whether or not I was going to buy a small tripod. I decided against it because I really didn't need it. At least uh, not at the moment. And you're getting one. A regular tripod, not a small tripod. It's not that small. It gets bigger. I'm still looking forward to that one. Uh, looking forward to getting my hands on that one. But as for small tripods, uh, I'll, uh, I'll wipe that off my list for the moment. Let's see. What else did I have here? I had a music idea that I was working on. Not only have I now worked on it, I completely forgot what it was. Which is great. It's fantastic. Let's see. I was going to say I was going to try to do something fun for my birthday, and I did accomplish that. I went out with a couple of friends and got sushi. Sushi's always good. Yay, sushi! All right, should I talk about my uh, goals for this week? Yes. All right, then. I'm going to attempt to uh, start that book that I was going. I said I was going to read, so I'm still interested in reading it. Hopefully, I'll have a bit more time now. Let's see. I'm going to try not to kill anyone at work this week. I was on vacation this past week, and it was awesome, and it looks like it's going to be complete chaos once I get back. Because apparently it was chaos uh, since I was gone. So I got that to look forward to. Let's see. I got to. I have to order two instrument cables. <clears throat> I think I mentioned that uh, last podcast for uh, for uh, uh, plugging into uh, uh, plugging into a sound system so I can. Uh, record directly from uh, PA systems and uh, soundboards and whatnot. What else I got here? I will try not to be fashionably late for the next podcast. Hopefully there will not be any errands that uh, get in the way this time. <laughs> I will try to remember to start editing the Minecraft videos now that I have the uh, dozens and dozens of gigs of uh, video footage from Will. Yeah, at some point I'm going to try to remember what website stuff that I was going to work on for the Full Coverage Writer site. I believe I had a, uh, a another idea for a site design. I'll have to uh, tap into my memory to remember what that was again. I think it's in our Skype messaging history. Okay, good. Because I remember you mentioning a few of the things, mm. unless it was when we were actually talking to each other, but I'm pretty sure you typed it up. Okay. Well, I'll have to go back and check. And last thing on my list is to try not to let Crunchyroll consume my life. Good luck with that. <laughs> Crunchyroll just had an AMA on Reddit you might be interested in reading through. Oh, really? I'll have to check that out. But uh, I've, I've actually burned through the first 20 episodes of uh, uh, Fairy Tale. Impressive. <laughs> Mind you, I did that in like two days. No, not even two days. One day. 
Uh, theoretically, episodes like 15 through 48 are still not up there because of licensing shenanigans. Mm. I have managed to figure out uh, ways around that that I shall not disclose on this podcast. Obviously, you're going to borrow the three DVD box sets I have of those episodes because those are officially licensed Funimation property. That is correct. I shall do that the next time we meet up, which is when again? Inconceivable. Is there uh, any meetups happening before then? Uh, there's the inventory turnover in two weeks. But that's all the way up at Ed's house. And I don't actually have anything to do with inventory. Do I feel like just showing up just because? We'll see how I feel. He's welcome. Okay. If you do, you probably want to call the couch now. <laughs> I thought I permanently called the couch. Sleepovers aside, I do need more excuses to drive my sweet new hybrid car. <laughs> also, if I forget to give CJ my sewing machine, I'll probably have to go to deliver the sewing machine. Just put your checkbook in the sewing machine box, and then remember to bring both, and we'll be good to go. I gotta put, a che I gotta put the checkbook in my glove compartment in my car. Thank you for reminding me. I'm gonna write that down now. So, yeah, those are my goals for the coming week. We'll see how they go. That means it's Will's turn. All right. So I was looking at the past ones, and I realized these are actually two weeks old because this is before Kineticon, so... Yeah, it's been a little while. Kineticon panel prep. Yeah, I did that, and I gave the panel. Hooray. Uh, record more gameplay. No gameplay happened worth recording, so that hasn't been recorded, but that's fine because, as Calvin said, there's plenty of gigs of stuff to go through already. Mm. Uh, write something. I don't even remember if I wrote something or not. It's too long ago. I don't remember anything before Kineticon. Uh, cosplay prep. Yeah, that got done because I had my cosplay. And give Borderlands 2 a try. I haven't stopped playing it. <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> oh, I've um, almost gotten to Sanctuary. I'm getting I, I, there. I just met Tiny Tina. She's an interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have a suggestion, not related to Borderlands 2. Uh, <laughs> since CJ is going to go to uh, Will's and Ed's place. And I may uh, end up there too. And schedule permitting, maybe I'll go anyways. Maybe we can recanonize our D and D campaign, and this time not jump right over the wall and then get slaughtered by pots of poison <laughs> and sticky glue. So CJ, this time I use I use fire pots. <laughs> mm. Only if we can get Calvin in on this as our tank. Yeah, a tank would have been useful. <laughs> <laughs> We're too squishy. Are you going Saturday or Sunday? I have not coordinated that yet. We can figure out logistics okay, off. I have both Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, August I'm free, pretty much. What, uh, what weekend is this? <coughs> uh, weekend, uh, uh, August 1st, 2nd, 3rd. First is the Friday. Sometime during that weekend. We can figure out logistics off there. Okay. We haven't picked uh, specific dates and times yet. We just know it's that weekend. Yeah. I see. Okay. 
But since we're still on air and we're already hitting an hour and 15 minutes, onwards with Will's goals. My goal for this week is to practice the literatical panel every day if possible in preparation for Inconceivable. I'm hoping to memorize as much of, possible, of it as possible to go through it even more smoothly than last time. We'll try and keep the drunk people away from you. <laughs> the drunk tuxedo masks need to stay away. <laughs> uh, record more gameplay. If it comes up, write for roommate. I've actually been succeeding in that the past couple days. I'm hoping to continue. And that's pretty much excuse me, all I've got this week that I can think of unless stuff comes up. I do have an hour and a half worth of driving rant audio for an NSFW an episode that I'm going to be uploading later today. Oh, I've got plenty of backlog for NSFW and yeah, audio. This one's a little more timely, though, so if, I'm going to you, try and fast track that. Yeah, if you want me to use that, that's fine. We can discuss that later. Yay for off-air discussions. <laughs> Oh, hey, it's events time. There's a lot of them. Let's see, August. Uh, we're done for this month. We survived Kineticon. Hooray! Uh, next month, our affiliate, Itty Bitty Sheep, is going to Connecticut Comic Con, uh, August 15th to 17th, the same weekend that most, if not all of us, are going to be at Inconceivable. That is going to be in Massachusetts. We have confirmed, so we can actually talk about this finally. We have a vendor table. We have three panels, not two. So is it time to panic yet about that? Yes. No, panic now. Always. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we got Will's panel is making a return, and we're going to be doing one on plot pacing and one on warping time and courting muses. That's going to be a double hitter. I worked on those two panels yesterday for five hours straight. I got all the research I want. I have 30 pages of content that I need to whittle down and refine and figure out what I'm using and what I'm not, so... Those are rolling along. Theoretically, potentially, maybe, perhaps, why not? Calvin is going to be attending New York Comic Con, unless they are completely sold out at this point. Uh, they pretty much are. Yeah, uh, just Thursday. Ah. Uh, should I take that one off the list? Uh, you probably should. All right. Uh, the one we are confirmed to go to after that isn't until November, so we got plenty of time. But most of us, plus our affiliate, Itty Bitty Sheep, is going to be at Rhode Island Comic Con. Obviously in Rhode Island. Providence, to be exact. Yes. We do have a vendor table there. I am working on getting press badges or at least a press badge, if not multiples, and I have no idea what they do for panels, if they even do panels. I'm having trouble finding that information out, but that is a viable possibility until I hear otherwise. So who knows, maybe Will will get to do his panel three times this year. Be exciting. And those are the main ones that I'm aware of for this year. I'm not talking about next year, because, no. <laughs> but, yeah, those are the places you're going to be able to find us when we're not on this weekly podcast or whenever we're not recording for the NSFWN or any other random shenanigans we happen to get up to. So if you can make it to any of those, please do and stop by our booth and say hello. We like to meet people. All right, that's really going to wrap up 
all the main segments of the show for this week. As always, we are brought to you by a lot of different people and organizations and groups. I'm not really in the mood to go through all of them, so just check out the show notes on the website. You can see all the various people who help make this happen and make this worthwhile. And if we have entertained you in any way, shape, or form during this episode or any previous episodes you happen to have caught, you can show your appreciation by subscribing to our YouTube channel. If you're watching this, chances are you're already there. But if not, then you can find us very easily. Just search for Full Coverage Writers. That's what we're going to fall under now, that I was finally able to change the freaking name. So it actually shows up as Full Coverage Writers, and not me. Hooray! You can check out all of the previous episodes of the podcasts, our book reviews, panels that we get to record, author interviews, all sorts of crazy fun. And you can also comment or thumbs up any of the videos. Join in our discussions. Continue the discussions. We like to talk to people, so talk to us. And, of course, we're on Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, Etsy. You can track us down in all sorts of fun places. So, since we haven't done it in a while, it's time to tell people just who we all are and where they can find us on the internets. That way they don't have to go through the older episodes just to find that out. So I'm going to roll from the opposite direction this week and do Will first. Ooh. Well, aside from <coughs> excuse me, this podcast, you can find me on my personal Tumblr page at darkhome.tumblr.com that's d-a-r-k-h-o-m dot tumblr dot com it is typically 50% of the time not safe for work it's a personal blog and I reblog whatever I want so ha huh? there's also a writing tumblr blog at my roommates a stripper dot tumblr dot com where you can find everything related to my ongoing if somewhat halted story my roommates a stripper you can also find information on that and a few other things on my SoFurry account at darkom.sofurry.com. But you'll need an account to view not safe for work material. Muted. CJ. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is Justin. So uh, all my accounts are in a transition as per my Facebook removal. So I'm going to pass this week and have all new ways to get in touch with me with a new email address, everything, uh, starting next week. Well, in that case, next up is Calvin. Okay. You can find me at my personal website. It's where I uh, show off all the websites and various graphics and fun things that I've done at uh, calvin.cwilia.ms. You can also find me at the music website Riffraff. That's riffraff.net, R-I-F-F-R-A-F. You can find me on Tumblr at instacal.tumblr.com. You can also find me on Twitter and Instagram at CCWII. And finally, you can find me on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com slash CWNY. There's plenty of places to find me. <laughs> As for myself, you can track me down on my zombified Twitter feed, silver underscore wolf 85. I am Makarov on the Fairy Tale Podcast, which runs on Monday nights at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. My personal Tumblr is fancypantswolf.tumblr.com. That is NSFW-ish, because just like Will, I reblog whatever I feel like at any given time, so you are warned. As for Full Coverage Writers, which encompasses everything that we do at the moment, our website is fcwriters.com. 
you can check us out. You can check out our Etsy store. It's just etsy.com slash shop slash full coverage writers. Our YouTube channel, if you haven't tracked it down, search for full coverage writers, or the short URL is wnja.us slash YouTube. Our literary Twitter handle is at FC Word Ninja. Our literary Tumblr is fcwordninja.tumblr.com. Facebook, you can track us down, just facebook.com slash writers. And for anything and everything else, just email us. Our email is wordninja at fcwriters.com. And that is going to wrap up episode 51 of Word Ninjas Live. You can tune in next Sunday for episode 52, where who knows what we'll be doing or what sort of shenanigans we'll get up to. But until then, have a good afternoon, all. Until next time. Adios.